Kev Radavis, former senior advisor in the Department of Health and Human Services, explains how cell phone radiation may be damaging our bodies. She discussed her new book, Disconnect, at Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. The talk is an hour. It's really, it's really an honor to be with you today, and this is a very special day for me um, because it is the publication of a book that I never thought I'd be writing. We have a little echo here. Um, I never imagined I'd write a book on a subject like this because five, six years ago when I first heard the possibility that cell phones could be a problem, I thought that's ridiculous. I was a <clears throat> pretty heavy user. I think at one point I had three of them. I now own two. I use one most of the time. And I thought if there was a problem, we'd know about it. After all, this has become one of the most popular gadgets of our era. But then I began to look. And as I looked, as I write in my book, I began to become concerned about what I was learning. Could cell phones really be unsafe? I didn't believe it. I didn't want to believe it. I'd been an early and enthusiastic adopter of this revolutionary technology. I used it to stay in touch with my children and husband at odd times and places. I prided myself on being able to keep up with my grad students on the latest geeky applications. I knew that most scientists were convinced, like me, that it was impossible for radio frequency radiation from phones to have any impact on human biology. In fact, there's an article today in Scientific American by a physicist who asserts this again. But as someone who has spent my entire professional career examining the links between the environment and health, I realized that, like the rest of us, science and scientists follow fads and fashions. Sometimes what everyone wants to believe turns out to be inconveniently wrong. Authorities in technologically advanced nations like Israel and Finland, where phones had been used longer and more heavily, had issued warnings about cell phones, and I wanted to know why. And that's how I opened the book, talking about my grandchildren with their helmets and their seat belts and their car seats and all the protective devices that we have for our children but then wondering about their brains. So I'm going to walk you through some of the evidence that we have today on cell phones and what we know about them. Wanted to make sure none of us miss it. Could you raise your microphones a little yes, more? Yes, I'm sorry. I this one? Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. Well, the title of the book is Disconnect. And I'm going to talk with you today about four major disconnects. The first is that most people don't know Cell phones are really small microwave radios, and they've never been tested for safety, ever. They were marketed without any safety testing. Most people may not know that cell phone radiation can be damaging. We assume it's harmless. In fact, I'm going to go with you today through very briefly some of the scientific evidence that's been developed by countries outside of the United States as well as by scientists working at a number of major institutions, some here and oftentimes those scientists who started to come up with research findings that industry didn't like found themselves without funding shortly thereafter. I'm going to talk about models of the brain, experimental evidence that cell phones can actually damage our DNA, not by causing heat, but by other means, and human studies that show some harm. Finally, another disconnect I'm going to tell you about is that other nations advise protecting your family and companies are issuing fine print warnings, but we know nothing about that. Industry, finally, has fostered confusion, which encourages the unprecedented use of this largely untested technology. But never fear. I think we can use cell phones more safely, and I think we need to put our faith in the ability of technology to lead us out of the problem that has been created. Now let's take a moment and look at what the electromagnetic spectrum is. It ranges all the way from here with very, very low frequencies of lights and electricity that powers our homes up to uh, gamma rays and x-rays. That's the electromagnetic spectrum, the things that you can't see that we know are, can be lethal. There's no debate that x-rays can be lethal. The question is, what about that stuff there in the middle? You see radio waves, cell phones, and radar. They're all at the very similar, very similar spectrum. And it turns out that that spectrum is exquisitely perfect for having effect on human biology. Let me uh, tell you how the cell phone got invented. The first radar range oven, and that's a picture of it actually on, on your right, had its own water cooling system, weighed about 700 pounds and cost about as much as two cars, and it operated at 1.9 megahertz with 1,600 watts of power. 
That's huge. You can imagine they weren't great commercial successes. And it turned out people didn't exactly like the word radar range. <laughs> now, it, 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 it was in fact the case that young sailors during the war figured out they could warm themselves by standing in front of the radar. And uh, <clears throat> that, in fact, they were getting warm from the inside out. Turned out not to be a good idea. Microwave ovens, the name was given afterwards, operate at 2.4 megahertz on 1,000 watts of power. And they boil water in two minutes today. Cell phones operate at a similar bandwidth, 1.9 to 2.4 megahertz, on less than one watt of power. But they can be used for hours a day, hours a day. Now, when the radar range was renamed microwave ovens in 1972, there was one problem that had to be fixed. There were hot spots and cold spots. If you put a frozen turkey in the oven and you let it run for a long time, you would end up with overdone meat in one section and cold stuff in the other. How many of you remember that? It was the, right, the cold spots, right? Well, the solution was to use a turntable to rotate the food. That's why all microwaves come with turntables today. You can't rotate your head when you're using a small microwave radio next to your brain for hours a day. Now, the progress of cell phones has been phenomenal. <laughs> They've, they're now smaller, faster, and more powerful. The first phones, they were really not so much portable as luggable. They weighed several pounds, and they used analog signals of several watts of power. Smartphones today weigh a few ounces and use pulsed digital signals of a tenth of a watt, sometimes a little more. So they are much, much faster, and they're much less powerful in the amount of energy they need to use. So what's the problem? Well, the brain absorbs radio frequency radiation, and this model shows you the parts of the brain. Notice the frontal lobe there, and this is a, a side cut of the human brain. Radiation, we know, reaches twice as far into smaller heads than it does into a larger head. And these images were developed by Professor Om Gandhi in 1996 when he was working for the cell phone industry to develop models of the brain. I tell his story in my book. He trained most of the people who do, who do this work throughout the world. Industry wasn't too comfortable with this finding because he issued a warning. He said, you know, I think we need to rethink what we're doing for children because we're getting twice as much exposure into the young brain and the young brain is not just smaller than ours, of course. The skulls are thinner, there's more fluid, and it has a greater potential for absorbing radiation into the brain. In fact, the dielectric constant is a measure of absorption of electricity, of the air is one. The dielectric constant of adult brains is perhaps 30 to 40. The dielectric constant of a child's brain can be 80. So a child's brain will absorb more electricity. And we know that the child's brain is exquisitely sensitive to all sorts of things. We know that lead exposure in the first two, year two years of life can cause permanent damage to children years later. So the question I began to ask was, what about radio frequency radiation? And in the book, Disconnect, I tell the stories of trying to understand these complicated models and sitting with an electrical engineering book on one side, a physics book on the other, and trying to make sense of it. Because you see, I am, like most health scientists in the world today, pretty ignorant about electricity, or at least I was, because there's no training program. There's no research underway. There's no way to support looking into this question with experts who understand it. In fact, Motorola cut its own research program uh, a year and a half ago. And the federal government was told to study radio frequency radiation and its ability to cause uh, cancer in the year 2000. That study is starting this year and will be finished in 2014. Now let's talk about these cell phone standards in terms of what we know about the brain. This big guy here on the left, that's SAM. It stands for Standard Anthropomorphic Man. It's a big guy. Actually, was at the top 10th percentile of military recruits in 1988, and he weighed about 200 plus pounds, six feet tall. His head might have weighed 11 pounds. The cell phones were tested to see how long they could be used without warming the head for six minutes back then in the first place, six minutes, when cell phones were not being used very heavily and those people who were using them were mostly, in fact, men. The average height 
of the world's person today is five feet seven. Sam stands over six feet tall and weighs over 200, I think about 220 pounds. If you look at the difference there, you'll see on the right, you'll see the head of a child. And this is 1,800 megahertz, which is the newer phones. That's 900 megahertz. The point is the radiation gets into the brain. And now we have millions of children using cell phones today. Three out of every four 12-year-olds has a cell phone today. The standards for cell phones were set for this big guy brain, and we have millions of our children in the United States and around the world using cell phones. That's the first disconnect. With four billion phones in use, and some people having more than one, fewer than one in 10 users have heads the size of Sam, six feet tall. Here actually are models that have been developed. And you can see from the models, that's Sam. Look at the difference in them. And they're not just different in size, they're different in the thickness of the skull and the amount of fluid. And the more fluid in something, the, f the more it can absorb radio frequency microwave signals. DNA, we all understand, is at the heart of every living cell. Without it, we wouldn't be here. It's exquisitely uh, con constructed with double helixes, and they can be damaged and get repaired because we have inherited the ability to repair ourselves. That's the good news story here. It's not too late with what I'm going to tell you.